Hi everyone, this is Ananda and this evening I'm going to talk about the perfectionist, the Enneagram type 1. Remembering that the 1s, the 8s and the 9s are in the body triad, which is the gut triad. It means that they use the gut, their instinctive knowing as their area of intelligence. We've recently finished the, um, the 2s, the 3s and the 4s. The perfectionist, the first word that comes to mind here is criticism. They have a um, very large inner critic and they have a tendency to criticize others. Their worldview is the world is an uh, imperfect place. I need to fix it. So the one has a tendency to automatically see what is wrong first. What a one needs to do is to start acknowledging what is right too, and to realize that the world is an imperfect place and that in itself is perfect. What the ones do, which is very important for, for anyone to understand is automatic and it's called reaction formation. Whenever they feel an emotion, which they don't consider to be moralistic, such as jealousy or anger or resentment, they immediately use reaction formation to turn the negative emotion into a positive emotion. A good example of this would be if you are watching, if you are one and you're watching a good friend of yours play an instrument that you both play and you can watch your friend play so brilliantly and beautifully and the natural your first reaction may be jealousy. Wow, they're playing so well. But instead of admitting to the jealousy or allowing the feeling to be what it is, they automatically use reaction formation and turn the jealousy into an instant kind of warm uh, feeling. For example, the response then would be, wow, you're such a great piano player. I wish I could play that well. But what happens then is the one tends to seem very phony because in fact, they're not being honest with their friend, nor are they being honest with themselves. But it is so unconscious and automatic, this reaction formation, that the one has to really notice, notice what it, what it is. And it all stems from their denial of being angry because they have anger lurking under the surface, just like the eights do and the nines do, but the ones tend to be in denial of this of this anger. And the anger manifests itself often as resentment and jealousy, two emotions that the ones actually feel often. The ones feel compelled to fix. When they walk into a room, they'll notice what isn't perfect in the room. Or when they meet a person, they'll be noticing what isn't right with a person. How can I fix this? How can I improve on this person? And the feeling around a, a one often is that you're feeling very criticized. And most people don't enjoy feeling criticized. And the one isn't just criticizing others. They have a, an internal critic constantly criticizing themselves. The tendency here is moralistic. In other words, I am a bad person if I feel anger, which is the moralistic point of view. In, so any bad emotion is automatically framed into another emotion, a good emotion, because to them, if they were to show their anger or their resentment or anything that in their mind isn't a virtuous feeling, then they wouldn't be perfect and they'd give themselves the hardest time. The inner critic would rule. Um, so um, the ones are merciless on themselves and often on others. This need to perfect is enormous. And there's a wonderful Mark Twain quote, which is symbolic of what the ones are like. And it, it goes, it says, good in the worst sense of the word. And I love Mark Twain. He has a great sense of humor. An example of a one is Al Gore and Atticus from To Kill a Mockingbird in that classic, classic book. That's a very healthy one because the ones can also be reformers. If they see something's wrong in the world, they'll find a way to fix it. And they, they, it's, it's really important for ones to actually find 
something that they can feel comfortable fixing so that they're not continuously giving themselves a hard time. Um, the subtype, so this perfection plays out in three separate ways. There are three subtypes, the self-preservation, the social, and the sexual. The word with a self-preservation one, which is all about survival, is the word worry. This one is the type of person who uses reaction formation the, the most. They're incredibly hardworking. Um, they are like to be autonomous. They, unlike the threes who want to look good for the sake of the image, the one really wants to be good. And their standards are so incredibly high that it is often almost impossible for, for anybody to live up to these high standards, which is often why the one um, can often drive people away because of the sense that people get around them of feeling criticized a lot. Um, the self-preservation one worries a lot. That's why the word is worry. They're anxious because when you always criticizing yourself and you always feel that, oh, I could be doing this job better or I should have done something differently or I could have acted differently, then you're always under stress. You're continuously feeling that something's inherently wrong, either with you or with the world around you or your environment. So ones really need to learn to relax above all else. Um, the social one, the word here is non-adaptability. These are my way or the highway type of people. Another great quote here is, once I thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. These ones are the least likely to admit when they do anything wrong. They tend to not want to move away from a, their way of doing things. And a fine example of this is if you are the type of person, a one who used to write your list on a piece of paper, and the whole world seems to have changed to taking your notes on your calendar, on your phone, the one will stick to the old way of doing things and think that that's the only way to do things. My way is the right way. They are extremely hard on themselves and on other people, but their anger in this, with this one, the social one is a coldness. They tend to just become, as they get very angry, they become very cold and distant. That's what the social one does. The sexual one, oh, I'm sorry. The other thing I must mention with the social one is there need to be an example of perfection. So unlike the self-preservation one, they're not necessarily criticizing themselves as much as the self-preservation one. What they're doing is they are convinced that they're their, the way of, their way of being in the world is the perfect way to be and everybody else needs to learn from their right example. Often the moralistic views are blanking out the real life feelings of ones and that's the big issue for a one. The sexual one is wants to, um, in, in terms, the sexual subtype is always in terms of relationship. So the sexual one wants to perfect their significant other or those people in relationship with them, but they don't feel the need to really perfect themselves. So they're constantly projecting and they're constantly criticizing the people in their lives, trying to get the people to live up to this immeasurably high standard, which is usually undoable. And what they do is um, they often have an, a, 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 um, they often have a way of not really needing or feeling they need to, perfect themselves. So they're always perfecting other people, which can be very annoying, actually. And the word here is zeal, zeal for the, for the um, sexual one. The zeal means like a reformer. I want to reform all those around me and the world around me, but I don't need to reform myself. And often these ones can lead double lives. Um, as far as the ones go, I would say the most important thing to really look at is the reaction formation, only because it is the most unconscious and the most automatic. They don't realize that they're even doing it. And often you will say to a one, well, you know, you do have anger lurking beneath the surface. And the more unconscious a one is, the response will be, oh, I don't really have anger as an issue. I don't really have to deal with that. And then they'll come up with some other issue they may have, anything but anger. 
but it is always the anger because it's in the body triad that's motivating this one to behave in the way that they're behaving. And it's this need to be perfect and to perfect that is driving them constantly all day long. And that perfectionism is a blessing because when a one is healthy, they can really use their talent to perfect in ways that can help the world, like Al Gore, climate change. But when a one is unhealthy, it really isn't going anywhere and people just feel really criticized and unhappy about being criticized. The one standards, again, are extremely high, both for, both for themselves and for others. You can see how ones can often be in the military, um, obeying laws, being the perfect soldiers, etc. You can see with a social one how they can have a teacher's mentality. In a social group, I'm going to model perfection to my classroom. So the style of talking is often like lecturing or advice giving. This is how a one usually speaks. It can seem very phony. And, and that is another thing a one really needs to look at. Is this truly coming from my essence? Is this really who I am? And drop the need to be perfect, realizing that the whole world is already perfectly imperfect. You are an imperfect, perfect being, and nobody around you can be or is perfect either. This way, your relationships will be much more healthy. You'll be able to sustain them and people will feel an element of comfort and relaxation around you. The biggest thing for one, I must mention, is to enjoy themselves. They have a tendency to be so uptight, always thinking about how they should be behaving in some better way and not really having any fun, which is why the word relax comes into it. Relax, have fun and enjoy your life. Um, life is supposed to be enjoyed and it's our birthright to enjoy it and be happy. This is the end of the Enneagram series. We've covered all of the types and I hope you share this with other ones and that you watch all the other types as well so it can give us an element of compassion and care and help us understand the other people in our lives and what motivates them. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.